Ladies and gentlemen, it's the first day after Easter. Welcome back to Retard Dunestan, where we talk about retarded nonsense in Retard Dunestan. Hello, Ramon. Mora, Mora, who hundred? That's the limit of my uh, knowledge of the language of the oppressor. So I'll just use the other language of the oppressor called English. Because if I use French, you're all Philistines and don't understand anything, even though it was the official language of diplomacy for hundreds mm. of years. But now there's no so diplomacy because everything's retarded. Anyway, well, Absolutely. Talking of retarded stuff, let's actually talk about our first news article right off the bat. Uh, allegations of racism in Gauteng. This should come as zero surprise. This is apparently a, uh, a school that's racist because of like stereotypes and stuff because they did a career day. And apparently at the career day, they had a black girl serving at the cashier and the white girl buying stuff. And now the department, the Gauteng Department of Education says it's racism and all these schools must be, must be investigated. Uh, one comment on News24, actually a very funny comment, um, does very nicely say with BEE, I seriously doubt that white kid could actually get this job anyway. Uh, exactly. That's actually very true. Exactly. Byron, here's the thing, right? So I've got children. You have children. Back in my day, it was difficult as a white kid to get like a student job. Because, you know, there's a most taking all the waitering, waitering jobs. Cashiers, there's a dime a dozen uh, people who, who do those sort of jobs. So, I mean, for, for whites, especially white teenagers, uh, white students, it's very difficult to get these sort of entry-level jobs in the marketplace. So we're supposed to somehow do our degree and then go straight to becoming a professional without anything in between the thing with these jobs they teach you skills they teach you how to be there on time to dress correctly to interact with people those are soft skills you need in life and so we you know that's not available to most white people and secondly i have to say when else did you see a white cashier like i didn't never i can't well, remember that... maybe in, in orania actually <laughs> if i remember we yeah actually i think there. i was the only place but as the comment rightly says, Ramon, with BE talk, it's actually the chances of actually getting this kind of cashier job, even for white people, is probably not going to happen, mate. Exactly. So if you're a black girl at a private school, it's possibly a very legit thing to say. Like, listen, I go to Big and Bay and I see all the black women being cashiers. I want to do that. Like, I wanted to be an astronaut and I wanted to be a, you know, a hunter and an explorer. And I didn't want to be like a Zulu warrior chief because it wasn't within my ambit of my culture and my race. But for this lady, but maybe, it, you know, a cashier is the highest aspiration and that's fine. But I do think, I do think it's interesting though, because the actual school themselves came out and said that they acknowledged the inappropriate stereotypes depicted. But it's not a stereotype. Like, you know, the, the point for me, the point that I'm like, again, is kind of like, why should you as a school have to sit there and almost double guess every single picture you put on social media and say to yourself, oh, is this going to be a stereotypical something or other? It's like it's dumb. Like, there's two girls in a class. Uh, would it have been okay if the other girl was black? And it was two black girls, like one black paying and one black servicing. W was that be okay? Like the, the chances are at some point in time, as you go around there, you know, a lot of the schools want to put two colors, right? Because they want to show they're inclusive. And then mm -hmm. it's like, if you think about it, if the white girl was sitting at the till and the black girl was buying, then they'd say, oh, look, it shows that the whites are excluding the blacks from, you know, jobs. Exactly. And if it's a black girl, it's like, oh, look, the whites are repressing her, yeah. making her a cashier. Like, yeah, come like, on, whites never dumb. win. Whites never win. If we take the jobs, we take the jibs. If we don't take the jobs, we're exploiting them. So, <laughs> like, I don't know what what these people what these people want from us. <laughs> no, I don't know either. Uh, yeah. Talking of this kind of topic, this section move on to our next article, which is actually on the similar kind of guy. Um, is that in Nasna? Uh, some DA councillor has been come under fire for saying that the council there was a monkey circus. And, you know, that's racism. And so she should be dismissed from her job now. This call for an immediate 
inquiry. Cyril loves his inquiries because yep. she referred to something as a monkey circus. Now, I'm not being funny, Ramon. Have you actually seen the councillors in Nasna? But he can't blanche that a whole documentary on the shit show that is Nasna. I think monkey circus it's, is actually being polite. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, monkeys are highly organized primates. Uh, with you know various structures in the hierarchy uh, who do various things. So I mean, you know, monkeys are highly advanced um, species. Councils, in the majority of you know of this nation, not highly structured and uh, not very organised and not very smart. So I think the problem with the term monkey circus is that it elevates the council to something that it isn't. You know, the the council's far lower than a monkey circus. Just a circus would be fine. Um, but even then, a circus is also very organized. You need to feed the tigers and shit like that. These councils can't run a circus. Mm. So even that maybe is too elevated for them. I think I think it's interesting, you see, because what we are starting to see and the reason that we are raising these issues is third article, some kind of vein, right? And that is... Yeah. The ANC accuses the DA city of Cape Town of neglecting informal settlements because it's racist. The white governments are ignoring the, the poor blacks and their, their plight in Cape Town. I mean, you know, informal settlements used to actually be called illegal or squatter camps. And we used yeah. to just say, like, they're not meant to be there. So you don't provide them services because you want them to leave and they don't pay for it. Remember that? Now they sanitized it. They gave it a PC name, informal settlements. How can you neglect something that's illegal? It's kind of like saying, you know, Ramon, I think you're really racist because you don't give free food to hijackers. I mean, whilst they're hijacking a car, it's a very strenuous thing. Why don't you go give them a cool drink? It's like, yeah, because you don't encourage hijacking. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a bit like, uh, you know, illegal immigrants flooding Europe. Uh, you know, the best thing to do is like to give them free four-star hotel accommodation and, uh, you know, McDonald's for months at a time because, you know, you don't want immigrants to come to your country. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem with the DA is that it spends too much money on poor people. Mm. It does. I Have you seen the budget? To... It's like billions of rands for like poor people and building houses. Why? 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 Why are you uh, giving incentive to the invaders from the Eastern Cape? That's what they are. Uh, because the crux of all of this and why they're suddenly all coming out with racism, bullshit, left, right, and censor is um, yeah, there's an election coming up, and uh, they don't know what else to fight the election on. So, when in doubt, go back to racism. What else are you going to do, mate? Yeah, but you know, the problem with racism, Byron, and I made this point on Twitter, and I sent it to you, but you didn't respond, so I don't know why. I, I think we need to... I'm, I'm tired of race communism, right? South Africa is a country of races, different races with different histories and, and different ways of doing things, and we need to lean into that. I'm tired of this non-racism bullshit. It's not going to work. It's never happened, will never happen in this place, and we must stop trying to force it through. So what we need, in fact, is race nationalism, where the different races of this country just, like, get really, really patriotic about their particular race and, like, really, like, get into it. Like, what's our culture? Where do we come from? What do we have done as a race? And then we can work with each other because then we don't need to be, think that, you know, everyone needs to be, like, a sort of weird, retarded Anglo person under the constitution because that's what the constitution wants us to be he'd be like that's a zulu that's a causa this is an anglo this is africana this is a colored we are not the same we don't want to be the same but we love each we love ourselves so we can work with each other that's what we need more race nationalism mm, what do you think? yeah yeah uh, i can hear your this, anglo uh, brain going <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so th this is the, the Twitter thing that you're referring to. So uh, yes, you said on Twitter, South Africa will never be a race-neutral country and we should stop wishing it to be. We need to double down on race and culture and respect the differences. It's the only identity we have left. Absolutely. Yeah, I understand. I understand your point. But here's the problem, Ramon. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a problem that will get us deplatformed in about two minutes. Right. 
certain cultures have achieved more than others. That's called history, my friend. That's just how it is. You can't say yes. that when people rocked up in Southern Africa and were dealing with the bush tribes whilst the Americans were inventing light bulbs and putting railway stations and railway tracks halfway around their country, that somehow they had both had the same level of technological advancements. And unfortunately, sure. that is true. And even the Chinese and the Japanese will tell you, like, Shogun's a great example, right? So there's a, a big debate at the moment as to whether or not the, the new TV series Shogun, very good series, by the way, uh, it's, it's, there's a big question of whether or not it's pushing forward the white savior trope. And that's because the Japanese went to the whites and said, oh, look, can you teach us about warfare? And unfortunately, some of the actual Japanese commentators themselves have had to go back to them going, no, this is pretty much what we call history. When the Europeans and the Portuguese arrived here, they were better at warfare than we were because they had developed these things called guns. And these things were very effective, especially in warfare. You're making a point for me. But what, I'm, what I'm saying that's what is I'm that saying. I understand what you're saying. But what I'm saying is that when you start breaking it down, you do realize very quickly that certain cultures and people advanced more than others. And that leads on to other problem areas of, well, then that means... Even, mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll let you finish. But then that means that from a European perspective, you're claiming forms of supremacy, right? Because you did something that others didn't. And as we heard from Joe Biden, and Joe Biden never lies, White supremacy is a bigger threat to the world than bloody terrorism, Vladimir Putin, and the atomic bomb. So you see, Ramon, very difficult. So here's, so here's my argument. I think having a liberal democracy under the Constitution in South Africa is this most severe form of white supremacy we've ever seen in this country. Because you want to make everyone a white liberal from a Canadian ripped-off Constitution that doesn't live in the hearts of the South African people at all some have advanced more than others but only within a context within the western context but we don't need to make zulus western we don't need to make the causes western maybe they don't want to be western if they want to be western we can help them right if you're proud of who you are we are proud of who we are we can help each other but i don't see why the zulu kingdom wants to be western maybe they want nothing to do with us maybe they just want to trade with us out they want to build you know the iron dome around uh ulundi to prevent it you know having missiles from eswatini coming through you know that's just not going to happen so to me living under the constitution in this country is white supremacy 101 because it assumes everyone is a white liberal number one number two because of that we have forgotten our history as uh, as a people, not just us. I'm talking about Zulus, I'm talking about Causes, I'm talking about Petis, I'm talking about Swanas, I'm talking about all these people. Because now we're a rainbow nation. Rainbow nation of fuck all, right? We need to double down on who we are. We need to double down on what made us. We need to double down on what we believe. And then once we fully understand and grasp where we lie in this nation called South Africa, that's when we can truly be free to interact and play with each other if we choose to do so or fight with each other if we choose to do so. But having everyone be like this middle class sludge of liberal Angloism is bullshit. And well, let us know in the comment section below what do you think of Ramon's suggestions. You know Actually, give us some proper comments. Like, we'd love to yeah. hear from you. There's usually a lot of people watching but they don't comment it really helps both the algorithm to push the video and it's nice to see what people actually think about the nonsense that we spout so do let us know in the comments below turning on to a different topic Ramon, um mm -hmm. we covered this last week and that was around the uh, speaker of parliament uh, supposedly she tried to get the um the the courts to not arrest her because remember they were doing apartheid tactics and you know this was all an election campaign and blah 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 anyway news out as she failed the yes. court stole her a foot sack and looks like she is uh perfectly at liberty to um get arrested what do you think of that 
Yeah, but when is she getting arrested? I want to see the bitch in fucking handcuffs. Well, that's actually a very good question, Ramon, because no one knows. They've been you told see, now that there's a green light. Go for it. You're <clears throat> green to go. Arrest her. And they're like, Africa time, baby. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll be ready. <laughs> Africa time in terms of arresting criminals. That's ridiculous. I need I need to see who's her lawyer. He's still Stephen May, my mate. Yeah, I tried calling last week. He's still Stephen. Yeah, he's not going to answer you. He's not going to answer me at all. Like, what's going on here, Stephen? But anyway, Stephen's great. Like he's a hardcore yeah. right winger, and uh, he, he's somehow defending her and defending the Zandile Gumede in in KZN as well. And I mean, he's doing a bloody good job. Listen, if they had an arrest warrant for her, he delayed it for a week with the bullshit urgent court interdict. And now he's saying, no, there's no need to arrest her. Just, I don't know, just like, just forget about it. I don't know, like forget about it. <laughs> How does this happen? Where else in the world do you have an arrest warrant and someone just doesn't get arrested because, like, trust me, bro. Like, that's the <laughs> reason. Me, bro. That's, <laughs> that's actually the reason. very, there's that's no very reason. much what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you doesn't well, say like, no, fuck you, we're arresting you now. What is going on here? What they're actually saying is they're like, you know, it's a long weekend, you know. Baba, Baba is still with the family. Yeah, you know, we'll get to it, man. Like they told us, is we can do it. It's like, ah, you know, it's holidays, man. Don't want to go ruin it with an arrest, do you? Yes, but no, they uh, yeah. Yeah. they don't know when they're going to do it. I, I when yes, they feel like I, it's. It's it's just so strange. And someone does say, why don't they have black lawyers? Because black lawyers are useless, as Jesus Malema said. And as that judge in the Senzo Muyue trial said as well, black lawyers are the worst things, the worst thing in the world. <laughs> so no one wants them anymore. You see, another act of white supremacy. Why are black lawyers wearing robes made in England? Ridiculous. They must wear like formal attire for their culture. So you want them going to court in traditional like Yes. Zulu outfits, yeah? Yes. Well, if they're Zulu, yes. I mean, if they cause it, it'd be a bit suspicious if they come in Zulu outfits. <laughs> what do you think? I'm not the one making the argument, mate. This is all you. <laughs> I, need, I need to, like, fine-tune it. Like, what sort of law are we going to follow? I don't really know yet. Uh, but, but, yeah, I think my argument is sound. Mm. Well... Talking of the election, as you know, uh, in the lead up to this election now, um, the ANC are doing what they consider to be the best for their campaign. Uh, um, they're killing each other. Not being so, in the country. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Best I've way changed. to get the people to re-elect you, you just like keep shooting each other. I mean, gun down gun down at his house. I hope he's okay. Next question. Do you see they, they're trying to make Fikilin Balula do... Um, Good things for the election. They sent him to Egypt. <laughs> so the best He's thing the Fikile River. Balula can do for the ANC is not be is, in the country. <laughs> just not be there. Like somebody was like, guys, guys, we have a problem. We got Fikile and Balula, and he's causing the implosion of the political party. You know what we need to do? Send him to Egypt. They used to do this as exile. Do you remember that? He's basically been sent into exile. But on political reasons. Yeah, but if you see what I'm sharing here, like he actually shared this on his on his Twitter. He's like he's arriving in Juba and he's exploring the Nile River and he's busy sort of dancing. <laughs> this because... could be the next president of the country. That's the I funny mean, part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like what sort of physio physiognomy is this? Physiognomy. How do you say that word? Physiognomy. There you go. You mean. Physiognomy. Anyway, but look, this is the future president, guys. There's solar panels on the boat, so he feels at home. It's, yeah, really good. So anyway, so how do you save the ANC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do you save the ANC? You send Fikile like to some bullshit uh, transitional national legislature in South Sudan somewhere because that's important. Excellent. That's that guy's a puss, man. That's... I don't, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to put that guy up there as like retarded the CEO people of the did. ANC. Retarded people did. Retarded people did. That's why it's called retard done. Wow. And apparently his birthday well, is on April Fool's Day, by the way. No shit of a joke. 
it is on April Fool's Day. Now, who says God doesn't have a sense of irony? You can't make this shit up, can you? Us. Oh, so what can I say, what? Jarvis says, in the spirit of inclusion, have you considered including the live chat? Yeah, we do, Jarvis. John, sorry, John. We normally do it like for the last 10 minutes. So we bring up what people are saying. But, you know, if someone says it was a rhetorical question, we're not going to answer that because it was sort of rhetorical. I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. So what's your what's your current take then on the, uh, the presidents? The... Um future presidency of the country. I mean, we're obviously getting closer now to the uh, the elections and we speak to a lot of the observers and the, the pollsters. Uh, how are you seeing this election getting split? Uh, as I've said before, uh, it seems, you know, I was really thinking ANC would, would like get 50, between 45 and 50, sorry. Uh, but with MK, not a chance. MK is like powering through and uh, getting, what, polling at 10% of the votes. <clears throat> nationally and close to 30 percent in kzn and that's just gonna that like that kills the anc that like, that takes between five and seven percent away from the anc and about one to two percent or three percent away from the eff nationally as well so mk is really 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 um yeah screwed things up for everyone and it's wide open so anc now is at 40 in my estimation da the 21 22 Action is say is one percent. Rather than Zanzi is a one percent. PA maybe two percent. Green front plus three four percent. Who else am I leaving out? EFF eight to nine percent. IFP six percent. Somewhere around there. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Well, unfortunately, it's still unclear as to what role MK is going to play because, as you may know, they are still fighting uh, a. Should we say a, a campaign with the ANC on whether it's uh, they should be allowed to be there or not? Remember, the ANC says that they are breach of copyrights and they don't want them to be a registered party. And then the mm-hmm. second problem they're having is still the Zuma can't run for president, which accordingly is unfair and irregular. Yeah, whatever. It's constitutional. <clears throat> That's what it is. It's in the constitution, and there's just not enough time to. Um, actually amend the constitution now to allow this. Although if you actually look at that whole two-term thing, I mean, it was ultimately an American thing, right? Uh, Americans were one of the first to do it. But in a lot of the countries that had this two terms, they seem to be removing it. I mean, Russia is a good example. China is a good example. This whole two-term thing is getting removed everywhere. Two terms are bullshit anyway. Um, I think it was FDR. He got four terms. And then they included like a a two-term thing after that, a limit. After that, I mean, sometimes you just need, I mean, we don't have two terms. Okay, for individuals, we don't. But I mean, the party has been in power here for, for 30 years and created gay rate communism one at once. So, yeah. But I don't think Zuma would have been president if MK won the majority. Or maybe. Mm. But he knows, he won't. He won't. Mm-hmm. I just want to see whether, what's going to happen if he doesn't get into parliament based on that rule of uh, his, what do you call it, the criminal record. Criminal record. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Is it going to really hurt MK, or are they going to use it to create more victimization for themselves? Yeah, that's actually a very good question, because, you know, somebody actually alerted me to this yesterday as well, and that is, does that also mean that technically Gaten can't be president because he had a prison record exceeding 12 months, which is the limit, by the way? So it lapses after five years, according to the rules, based on what I saw on Twitter. That's why the PSC can go on there, even though they killed like whites in the 80s. And Kenny Kunene and Gaten could go on there as well. So it does expire after five years. Mm. Mm. So yeah, apparently any prison sentence over 12 months. And Jacob Zuma was given a prison sentence of 15 months. So he's exceeded it. But remember, he also considers his prison sentence and his criminal conviction to be irregular. He says it was uh, targeted, remember? It was captured judiciary. Uh, he, maybe he's not wrong, eh? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's a little bit like the step aside rule. You know, the step aside rule that only ever applied to Ace Mogishwile. Yeah, yeah, they applied once and then they fucking dropped it. <laughs> yeah. 
Because then they realized that pretty much the entire ANC would have to step aside if they actually applied the rules properly. Including the people who forced you to step Ooh. aside. Mm. Yeah. There's a Frenchman. Hold your horses, everyone. Hold on to your purses. There's a Frenchman in the comments. Where? Put, put the family silver away. <laughs> that one. <laughs> What's to say, Ramon? You're the Frenchie. It says, uh, very happy to see both of you on your uh, live stream. Bonjour, Derek. Comment ça va? J'espère que ça va bien. And why the hell are you speaking French? That is not a French. I never really speak the, foreign to me. The surname is French, to be honest. Old French. It's Dutois. Now it's called Dutoy. Love. Yeah. Love. Love history for you. Lovely. So, uh, Seth asks, do we think that uh, Stian Asen will be dropped after his performance in the selection? You know, I have no. actually been wondering that, uh, because if they get a less of a vote, which I think they will just purely by the way that the votes are now split, um, percentage-wise, they'll probably get a lower vote than they did last election. They might lose their 50% in the Western Cape. Yeah. Certainly, as suggestions are they may lose their 50%. Will they drop Stian Asen? It's actually a very good question. Um, no, because who the hell are they going to replace him with? There's a dirt of people. Know. There's only three people, and they're all white guys. <laughs> you can take over his job. It's Leon Schreiber, who's, who's quite good. Celia's Brink, who's a mayor of Pretoria. I'm going to use Pretoria because that's the real name. And thirdly, uh, Jordan Hill Lewis, who's a mayor of Cape Town. All of those guys, while well, the two mayors have you know, a mandate, to their respective areas. And Leon Schreiber is a very good propagandist. But there's no one else who can take over that job. This is actually, unfortunately, the story, though, of uh, South African politics everywhere. I mean, even in the ANC, who's going to take over from Cyril Ramaphosa? It's not that he's great. Yeah. He's actually, pretty, as we said, the worst president we've ever had. But who the bloody hell takes over from him? There's no talent there either. Well, I mean, we need... So we need um, the Fikile to take over. Come on, man. I keep telling you this. Yeah. Not sure that I want that. But I want Fikile. Oh, come on. I want Fikile to be uh, president of this, of this place. Imagine him doing a sonar address. He's like, hey, the travel with the trains is that we're going to build more. Yeah. And then the police is a fuck. It's gonna be great. Like I can't even speak English properly. It's gonna be so. It's gonna be so much fun. Imagine the memes that will come from the Kili's presidency. Trump, Trump level to uh, memes, huh? Yeah, like, just glorious. It's just amazing. So let's actually go abroad to the uh, Communist Republic of Scotland. And in the Communist Republic of Scotland, they, uh, I don't know if you know, but they've recently introduced this hate crime bill. We have actually talked about yeah. it on the show before, but basically it's now live. It's now law. And um, very interesting that uh, one of the people that they're saying that the Scottish government would go after was J.K. Rowling because she obviously has this whole thing now about, you know, you know, real women, you know, the ones that were born women. She thinks they're the only ones that are women. And apparently that's a hate crime these days. So J.K. Rowling actually came out and after the law went live. And they, um, they basically said uh, she dared the government to arrest her. And um, she said because that. she's because she takes the strong view, she dared them to arrest her. And uh, they haven't yet. But she said what would happen that has actually happened and that's all the trans rights harry potter i hate jk rowling's people have come out and filed their complaints so technically speaking uh, she actually has enough now to get one a criminal record a record against her because of complaints of hate crime and technically she should actually be arrested according to the rules all for having an opinion on twitter ramon what do you think of that so so what I've heard is that the uh, Paki Prime Minister, whatever his name is, I don't know what his name is, it's some Paki name. Uh, he had a speech a while ago saying, everyone in Scotland is white. The mayors are white and this person is white and everyone's white in Scotland. It's like, yes, it's 98% white. Of course, everyone's white in Scotland. That speech, apparently he's been, like a lot of people have been complaining about that speech and laying charges against him for racism and things yes. like that. And it's just, just 
wonderful if that happens, right? Because how can you have an agent from another country becoming your prime minister? I mean, this is really like, this is called colonialism. Um, and then he comes in and he creates a law that says, oh, it's hate speech to speak ill of people if they feel offended, irrespective of whether that offense is objective or not. And then, uh, yeah, so they basically just take him and charge him with a hate crime. And this is exactly what needs so, to be done, ladies and gentlemen. So they have. So the actual, mm. they got over 3,000 complaints because of that speech, now that the law's in place. And they... In two days, went, by the way. Yeah. So now that that's, that law's in place, his speech of everybody's white, as you very rightly said, it's actually a very... Like when you actually listen to the speech, it is so it's, racist. Yeah. It's not even funny. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But that's the UK for you now. Anyway, so the Police Scotland obviously has got all these complaints and said, um, yeah, fuck you. We're not investigating that. It's uh, it's not interesting enough for us to go after the PM. So they're but they're not investigating any of them as far as I know. Nothing against J.K. Rowling. Like none of those complaints. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to say at the moment because J.K. JK Rowling is really pushing them, trying to get herself martyred. She's like, I want She's you. Based. I want you to. She's based. I mean, come on. How can you take a single mother who was living on the doll, who made a billion dollars like in five years, and think you can take her on? She's not some trust fund kid, right, who's work. She, she, she grew up poor. She worked shitty jobs. She wrote a great book. Well, I haven't read it, so I don't fucking know. She wrote a great book, and or a few of them, made lots of money. And now you're trying to take her out? Like, guys, this is not Kim Kardashian. This is not some airy-fairy fucking social justice warrior. This is a woman who understands what suffering is. Do you think she's really scared of you? She can take on the whole state. She's got billions of pounds at her disposal. For telling the truth she's gonna fuck you up just don't do it anyway yeah but that kind of that the politics now in the uk is like really really um i hate to use the word toxic it's like I, that's that race to toxicity and that gender toxicity is, is is terrible but it's terrible by a very small vocal minority and that vocal minority basically gets their own way whilst the rest of the people are just you know branded as being white it's very interesting to see, and everybody knew it. The hate crime bill would be selectively used to punish political dissidents, and everybody's now basically waiting to see how it gets applied. Because if you if you don't apply it equally, if you don't investigate Hamza and give Hamza mm -hmm. a caution for three thousand complaints, but if you do go after J.K. Rowling, then the law is the law is biased. If you ignore both of them. The law is pointless. So now what? Uh, then you turn to Richard Lannister. And then you like, we will, you know, arrest warrant is out for J.K. Rowling. We're not, not too sure when we will execute it. And J.K. Rowling will be like, no, don't arrest me because reasons. Trust me, bro. And then, yeah, <laughs> Scotland will become South Africa. <laughs> well, arguably it's already <laughs> getting that yeah. way. Arguably it's far worse than South Africa because firstly, it's filled with Scots. who are terrible people. And B, it's, yeah, has this law not even not even the retarded ANC communist bastards have a law like this mm. no doubt they would want to though yeah but again how would you how would you even uh, apply it in retardanistan I mean, we don't really have a legitimate police force I mean I would pay all, all, those poor, all those poor people you see on the side of the street I'll pay each of them a hundred bucks to form a queue outside the police station and they are charged against Judas Malema every day Best use. Yeah, uh, uh, it's anyway. very um, interesting old world we find ourselves in. Talking of interesting world and retardation, I actually want to share something with you, and I thought you you might find it amusing. So, mm -hmm. in the Islamic Republic of of England, they uh, recently had a case of an Albanian. An Albanian asylum seeker who arrived by a small boat. Now, if you read that, that's uh, this political speech. Well, basically, this was a boat migrant who just rocked up on the shores, you know, illegally. Anyway, yeah. um, he was jailed for 13 months for basically having a big high-speed chase with the police at 110 
miles per hour. That's mm -hmm. quite fast in terms of kilometers, like 180, 190 kilometers an hour. Anyway, long story short, he uh, finished his, his term. And what do you think they did with him, Ramon? Send him back to Albania? Uh, no. They let him lose in England or something. That's exactly what they did, mate. Let me they go. let him back loose in England, even though he's illegal and he's already got a criminal record. How's that for retarded, mate? Oh, that's for liberal tyranny. But just say, this is unfair because he's illegal. Oh, hate speech. White boy. <laughs> well, that's exactly that's it, right? That is how it works. That's, that's what the censorship is for, right? Mass immigration is there to change policies and demographics. And if you notice it, you go to jail for hate speech. That's how it works. That's the point of all these laws. People yeah. don't give a shit about you. They don't care about people's feelings. No. They want to change your country, uproot who you are, and when you notice it and point it out, they're going to send you to jail for hate speech. You, you're, ra you're racist. Yes. Racist. That's the, because that's you're the game white, plan. isn't it, Ramon? And it always has been. And it always has been the game plan. You know who the most racist people in the world are? First generation immigrants. Go anywhere in the world, right? The Swedish Democrats, the right wing, what do you call it? Right wing Swedish Democrats. 30% of their voters in Sweden were first, first generation immigrants from Somalia and Africa. Because they came 30 years ago, they went through all the trial and tribulations of getting citizenship and residency. And now, all, now Mohammed off Bangladesh, the fresh of the boat, just comes in and fucking throws a grenade around. And we're supposed to accept this as Swedish citizens. So I'm going to say thank you to Johan for the nearly 200 Rand super chat. It says lunch is on me. Thanks, Johan. Thank you, I'll sir. Send, Very kind. I'll send Ramon a streetwise too. For 200 bucks. I don't know much. This. I don't eat KFC because, you know. I'm not hey, poor. that's racist. How dare you say that in retail <laughs> Dunstan? It's like the national food, man. Probably is racist. <laughs> There's a hey, crumble right there. What are you trying to say? <laughs> oh, man. Let's answer some, uh, some of the comments, mate. Let's do this. Let's do. So, uh, people, okay. uh, please put a question mark at the end so we know it's a question. That would be very helpful. Yeah. So, uh, FJ says, would you perhaps be open to doing a video on where they are involved, if at all, and where we as citizens can get involved to help them? Hmm. Uh, what's this relating to? I don't know. Who's involved? I think this is uh, relating to an earlier thing, which is said... Uh, which parties are actually involved? Out, which None. Are actually involved in creating. Mm. None ACDP. <laughs> oh, yes. Maybe only ACDP. Guys. ACDP. Stop worrying about politics. Politics are a bunch of gangs who want your vote so that they can be in power to fuck around. Like, that's what politics is, especially here in South Africa. Nothing mm -hmm. fundamentally is going to change. So don't worry about it. Just focus on yourself. Craig very nicely added uh, a Britain stand. It's like retail done stand, but Britain is done. Mm -hmm. We need a better term for it. Mm. Why don't we cover games? Because we don't play games. We serious people or movies. Mm, that's not true. So Ramon and I are both uh, playing Diablo 4. You know, well, I tried to play it over the weekend for about half an hour and then I just uninstalled it. It's the first time I opened my Xbox in months and it was there on Game Pass. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll try again. So, I'm playing a little bit of it at the moment. I'm playing a little bit of Diablo 4 on my Steam Deck, but um, because I'm posh like it, you see, yeah, and it's, sure. it's okay. Uh, I played some of the older ones, and this one's like open world. And I'm not really sure the open world. Some people say it's, they like it, but I'm not sure it lends it to the, that type of game format. But actually, I don't play a lot of modern games, Ramon, because I find a lot of modern games these days have been captured by the same ideological bullshit that you find in a lot of Hollywood movies, right? It's like strong, strong male character gets replaced with strong female character. Strong male character from previous game turns out to be a proper chump and can barely tie his own shoelaces. It's like, okay. 
you know, strong white character from last game now lands up as a strong female person with disabilities in a wheelchair who can do everything better than he can. It's like, I don't find that interesting in games, mate. It's like... I suppose not. I don't know. I, as I said, I don't play that many games. Uh, the last real game I played that I really enjoyed was Red Dead Redemption 2 back in the day. Like, that was proper. But since then, now and again, I dip into it, but not so much. Uh, so Lucien has a question. Lucien, yeah. as we say in my language. So that's uh, what's our stance on the uh, the PA? Uh, we actually recently did an interview with them um, on the main channel, Morning Shot. Uh, we did an interview with the co-founder of it. Uh, we actually also many months before that we did an interview with Gator McKenzie uh, when we went to go see him in Beaufort West and have a look at you know some of the work he had done there. Um, this is a hard one. Fair. Ramon, what's your comment? You first. So uh, uh, we spoke to Charles Elias, uh, who's the co-founder of the PA, who is really high up in the PA. I don't know exactly how much power he has in there, um, but the PA is definitely a uh, a Gator McKenzie party, as he said. So Gator, when we met him, listen, great guy, had a great time. You sort of when you when you're in his aura, like he's got this aura, his sense of aura around him. And then when you look at the decisions they've made, because the DA doesn't want to work with them apparently, and they side with the EFF and ANC. I mean, I as, as a pure politics, I get it. They want to be in power, they want to be in control, and they will sleep with the pigs to do it. I get that. And probably I would do it as well in their circumstances. But this, and I asked Charles this question: At what stage do you get out? Because Nizer's a fuck up, Joburg's a fuck up, Atkulini's a fuck up, and you are the guys that are keeping this organ of predation together. There is some responsibility bearing on you because you're the ones that are allowing this to happen under your watch. And there wasn't a clear answer as to whether they should pull away from all forms of power to prevent greater harm happening. Mm. I'm not too sure they will pull away from power. So, yeah. Can I vote for them? That's a bit too early for me. I worry greatly about the governance. Yeah. Anyway, Brian says we need a tax revolt. Uh, this is actually tomorrow's video, Brian. So uh, yeah. tune in tomorrow um, for tomorrow's video. Spoiler, not happening. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, basically. Um, what percentage do we think of the youth actually vote for the EFF? A very small because the youth don't typically tend to vote. They're incredibly lazy. Uh, yeah. The actual voting typically occurs with the older generations because the youth are bloody lazy. Everywhere in the world, by the way. Mm, very much so. So George says, have we seen what the OHM party, the organic human movement party wants to do we get asked this so much Ramon, and the biggest problem i have with this question is that no one cares no one this, cares this guy is literally all. he doesn't appear on any of the data like people that like what he stands for like really like him and they really like the party but outside of like a couple of people that really like the party He's in none of the polling data, none of the work data. He's, I don't, I don't understand how this party gets so much attention on our chats and in our comments. Yeah, it seems to be sort of an online phenomenon. So I haven't, you know, read too much about them. We have been contacted in the past. I spoke to someone involved with them, and it's like direct democracy and all the shits, and you know, anti WHO, and yeah, great. But without power, what's the point? Like I'm, a, I'm only looking for. Or people that can actually have power and do something, you know, just because something aligns with your views and you vote for it doesn't mean you'll actually have any power whatsoever. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough about them and I really don't give a shit, to be honest. Vote for them if you want to, but I think it's going to be a waste of time. Mm. Yeah. I would agree. So, Don says, uh, no, not Don. Sean, sorry. Sean says, uh, would we buy a uh, DM4556? No. Uh, for your 308 all the way, baby. 308 all the way. I've actually been red-pilled on this. 
uh, quite a bit. So the 5.56 cartridge to me is too light and too small. You need a bit of 308 in there to really get into uh, through obstacles, through doors, through people. So I would buy a 308 of, of any rifle. I think I have a different approach to this and that, that the approach starts off with uh, basically for what? So what you said, would you buy one for what? So I have a 556. I have an AR-15. Yep, I have a real one, not just that one on the wall. Um, and it's being custom kitted out myself. It's a very nice gun, but it's great for, should we say, faster shooting and should we say, like, if you need to do any form of target shooting, it's, it's a great gun. If you're doing anything like hunting or any actual, like, marksmanship, the 556 cartridge isn't really good for that. But if you need like 40 rounds in a mag and you need to run around with 10 mags and your your bed, because the weight is lower. But and unfortunately, Ramon, like 308, the weight difference is massive. Yeah, but I'm 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 fit and strong because I got a melon one. That's nice. <laughs> But I think so. I, I've spoken. To, I've been to a shooting a shooting show with the South African Special Forces, like, like three four years ago, and they were in Mozambique or going to Mozambique at the time. And um, and I said, you know, we we're, we're testing out the five five six and the three hundred eight variants of a particular gun they were shooting, and he says, you know, he always goes for the three hundred eight because he's shooting a terrorist across the wall or across bushes or across whatever. The five five six just doesn't penetrate. It doesn't just hit the target. So the 308 for him was better. It's heavier. There are um, limitations on how much you can carry and all the rest of it. But in terms of accuracy, very good. But in terms of just just the bullet getting to the target, it's better than the 556 by a large margin. And I think for South Africa, the type of urban and sort of countryside that we have, I think it might be worthwhile as well to go 308. Yeah. Right, so Lucien uh, gave us a 200 Rand uh, Super Chat. Keep up the great content. We really appreciate that. Thank you Why so you much. You? That's Why I should pay you? for a couple of cans of Ramon's dog food. Uh, dog food? Uh, like it has a raw diet, my friends. No dog food here. So John Jarvis says, uh, what is the quickest way to get a legal or illegal firearm? Uh, if you want an illegal one, any taxi rank, and you sort it. No, it any police station, which you're talking about. <laughs> Taxi <laughs> rank. Let's go to the police station. <laughs> the fastest way to get a legal one, uh, there's no such thing. So no to get an actual one. legal one, you have to go through competency and then you have to apply for that. And then once you've applied for it, you have to buy your firearm, get that license and wait for that to happen. It's it's a long old process. But once it's done, it's done. I got a lot of firearms, Ramon, and so do you, but it's mm. a long process. I'm not going to pretend that there's a quick way to do it. It's just no, start your you just process get, and get it over with. You just get people to do it for you after a while. It's just easier. Mm. So, Sean asked a good question. Mm -hmm. Which one? What What is your go-to home defense choice? Is your 308 for uprisings? So, a go-to home defense is definitely a shotgun. And then it's maybe like a, um, what's that thing called, Byron, where you put your pistol in it to create yeah, a Ronnie. PMC? Ronnie. Ronnie. There you go. Like, I, I already rate Ronnie's for this. If you got like 60 rounds, a long magazine, nine mil at home, that's pretty good. Because, I mean, you're shooting within, what, 10 meters for the most part. Mm. So nine mil is perfect. And shotgun. Like, those are the two things I would do for home. For longer range, throw it. Definitely. Mm. So Ronnie, Ronnie's are definitely worth it if you've got, uh, you know, an actual full size firearm. So if you've got something like a uh, Glock 19 or CZ, whatever bullshit you have, I know you got some CZ crap. But um, if you've got a full size firearm, it, it makes sense. 
because you can get an extended magazine like 32 rounds and like i got a clock 19 and you can get very long mags and you got one spare one there it's basically like having an ar but in a more compact version with the power of a nine mil but you also don't want too much power right because you're shooting a 308 in a in a closed area it's going through your walls you've got people in your house it's dangerous um so that does make sense it gives you at least the round count but in terms of a home defense if it's a gun just for the house, nothing beats a shot. 45. Yeah. Nothing yeah. beats a shot. But I think a 45 is better than a 9 mil as well. Yeah, or a 40. The problem with 45 mil is your round count. I mean, you look at it like uh, one of my now favorite guns, 13, uh, no? 1911. Sure, 13, like eight. Man, it's like fucking shit. Well, I get like 16 in my 9 mil. It's not that bad. Like, it's not much. Really? But if you shoot someone with a 45, that fucker is not getting up. <laughs> At no, all, but the nine mil he might. So, so I changed my mind. Forty-five, not a Colt. Get one of the thirteen rounder, like a Sig, a forty-five ACP plus a shotgun. Then you're good. Yeah. So John Jarvis says the uh, five-five-six was never meant to drop a person. Uh, actually, that's very true, Ramon. The actual five-five-six was originally designed to give cover fire, so that the proper guns could be used to take out individuals the 308 yeah but, but nato changed to the 556 like you know, right 20 30 years ago now i can't remember and i heard off the grapevine that they're regretting that they want to they actually to the, changing it there's there's specs oh, there. now to have a new firearm issued for the americans and that's going to be based on 308 hey that's why because you can't oh. actually get an ar now that shoots 308 not that's right that's right yeah. oh lucian has a canic so we spoke to someone who knows canic very well so i want to go shoot a canic apparently it's wonderful it's a turkish copy of the clock uh but we'll we'll see if we can get a few to test out so one of 4040 is asking since all the components oh my apologies go ahead. D derek says clock operator clock mate i can't stand the beretta much of money, whichever one is most comfortable for you. Anyway, you were saying one of 44? Yeah, since all the components on South Africa firearms are serialized, how do you modify your? Well, you have to apply for it, I suppose. I don't modify anything, so I don't know. Mm. Just go to Gunsmith, they will do it for you. Actually, very difficult to modify guns in South Africa and actually find a competent gunsmith. I know I've tried yeah. to do it. In the end, I actually ended up having to learn how to do it myself and follow YouTube yeah, tutorials. You live in the Eastern Cape, mate. Nothing's there. There's no confidence in the Eastern Cape. Up here, there are a few of them, I'm sure. Maybe. Who knows? Either way. So, uh, Detroit says, shotgun. You can shoot blind and not shoot through the bedroom walls with your wife on the toilet. Now, that might be one of the drawbacks, though, if you think about it. Depends who you speak to, eh? <laughs> speak, speak for yourself. I love my wife. I'll never shoot her. Intentionally. Funny she said um, the same about you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, she hated guns. Well, not hated. She was like scared of them. And then I took it to the gun range, but they had like the .50 BMG and the Uzi and the AR and the twenty two, And she shot all of them, but now she loves them. So, Ramon, I'm actually going to uh, show you something actually about shotguns, especially in terms of home defense. Um, so we're talking about, uh, obviously, you know, shotguns being the best there. I don't know if you've seen these. But uh, so Umrex makes one of these things. They call them the home defense extreme markers. Anyway, so they shoot these metal balls using gas canisters. Mate, they are shooting at 45 joules you have any idea how much power there is in 40 joules your standard air rifle shoots at like two so it's like this is hitting you with one fucking hell of a hit how's that for a, a shotgun alternative i've actually seen one of them they literally sound like a proper shotgun you literally cock them like a shotgun you load them like a shotgun but isn't like a second shotgun, a second shotgun is like five grand that's very expensive yeah, I know. The second-hand shotgun has to go through, like, you know, licensing and shit. And some people in our audience don't want to do that. I suppose. Stop. It's, very, it's a very interesting alternative. I have seen these. I've seen some of the 
they're literally shooting metal or rubber balls. Uh, 40 joules is nothing to laugh at. That's a lot of energy to get hit with. So it's an alternative if you can't actually afford the real one. You're right. I do have the real one. I've got a couple. I actually got more shotguns than I do any other gun. Do you know that? I think in total I got like five. I yeah, so I heard. Every time I come to your house, you're like, oh, look at my new stuff. Whatever. What a new save. Starting to do like a fucking gun shop. And um, jealous. I, I, I didn't say anything. Uh, I didn't say anything. So a lot of people, so people are asking what sort of safe, just, just buy a normal safe, guys. There's no like, you know, we're not going to mm. fuck around and say what's so actually, actually, safe, I have that, a different, I have a different beneficial. take on this. It says, what is your go-to safe for a knife and mill? Uh, it's yeah. called your waistband. <laughs> like there's no point in having a knife mill and keeping it in the safe, mate. Like you That's true. need to get that thing and it needs to be on you at all times. Otherwise, you're going to be the guy that gets your house robbed and then they're going to steal the firearm from you and everybody's going to be like, why? You're going to be like, I was in the safe. They put a gun to my head yep. and told me to unlock the safe and they stole it. You're like, it's not what the gun's for. The guns are to protect you from getting robbed. So keep it on you. Then uh, if you understand that premise, then who cares what's safe? I mean, the saps are going to ask you to have a safe, but who cares? It's just part of the licensing. One that satisfies saps. There you go. That's your go-to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, get a safe. It's important, like, you know, if you're not at home to put your guns, plural, guns away. You can't leave your shotgun lying on the kitchen counter and your rifle in the fucking toilet. Yeah, of course. You know, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, none more. This is my safety. And uh, my waistband is my safe. Mm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh... What can I say? Anyway, mate, uh, last cool. comment. I'm going to take yes. one more comment and then we need to end. And that is uh, Brian says a 2-2 P, uh, PCP air rifle is also lethal in the right hands. Mate, fucking anything's lethal in the right hands. I mean, watch a John Wick movie. I mean, he literally kills people with a fucking pencil. And if you really think about it, you probably could if you really, really wanted to. But it's mm. like anything's lethal in the right hands. But um, sorry, I'm just responding to someone. The an underrated gun to me is 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 a suppressed point two two uh, pistol. Very quiet, yeah. very accurate. You can get like five shots off before someone gets one shot off in your direction. I know mm. people are going to say there's no stopping power, blah blah blah. But if you really like, sort of can't afford much point two two, the most cheap. Put a suppressor on that pistol, keep it around you in the house. You can get a lot of damage done with that if you accurately yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting because I have a 2 2 rifle and it's actually probably my favorite rifle, even though I've got, you know, all the big rifles all the way up to the 308s and the 50 BMGs and all that kind of crap. But actually, the 2 2 is probably my favorite rifle by far. It's also yeah. the most versatile and useful rifle I have. So, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I got one for my 11th birthday, a point two two rifle. I still got it with me. I shot my first, uh, shot a lot of stuff with that. I still got it. It's great. CZ1, of course. CZ1. Uh, Helen, I'm so sorry you just arrived. Um, but yeah, we're about, about to experience. go. So apologies. Yeah. But you can catch it <laughs> on catch up. Right. The, the, I, I lied. One more comment. Okay, the Wondrous is uh, Black Powder six, six Shooters works well. I actually have one of those Black Powder Six Shooters from 1860-something. It's very pretty. Um, Borlake made to to actually use because if you don't load them properly, they don't fire properly, and if you don't plug the holes properly and cover everything up, well, that's a Borlake too because basically what you get is cylinder what like the main cylinder fires and it literally lights all the other cylinders together it's, like, ah, it's a massive ball like to use okay we need to go because we've got the trolls coming in from new zealand Hot yeah, farms in new zealand, zealand. gun free island yeah. sorry no mate. violence you're stuck, you're stuck in woke island not that's... yeah no violence except against sheep shame on you mm. sheep can't fight back if they've got no guns anyway absolutely right anyway mate go. it's Just been an hour Thank Indeed. you for joining us on Retard Understand whilst we talk Thank you, retarded nonsense about the global phenomenon called retardation of the human species. Until next time, stay retarded and we'll see That's you soon. That's the one.
Bye.